when you lose a child, you know, it's it's more just walking every day and getting, I can't say getting used to it, but growing accustomed to thinking of him. And then the next thought is, oh no, he's gone now. He's not here. He's he's in spirit. He's in non-physical. He's not in this you know, physical reality with me anymore. In 2020, musician Melissa Etheridge experienced every mother's worst nightmare, the loss of a child when her 21-year-old son Beckett died on May 13th from an opioid overdose. When you have a loved one who is battling opioid addiction, it's horrific. It's, um, you feel helpless. You, you don't know what to do. You know, we went through, it was about a, a good year of up and down, the last year before he, he finally passed. And you would think, okay, he's doing better, he's doing better. And then, you know, you would find out, oh no, he's slipped down. And the last, the last two weeks before his death, um, you know, he was, he had moved out to Colorado. He was in the process of getting a, a job out there and he loved, he just his love was uh, snowboarding and he was such an outdoors person. And the the drug abuse really, um, really turned him into someone I didn't know. And the last couple weeks, he was paranoid. He was, he was, you know, all of a sudden he was involved with guns and he's uh, just, just, just became someone I didn't know. And I would, I would talk to him every single day. We, we talked every single day uh, for his whole, you know, since he was, you know, 16, 17, we would talk every single day. And um, four days before he died, he called me, he says, mom, I'm, I'm really scared. I'm, and he mentioned fentanyl. And I said, honey, that that's not gonna, you know, you and I tried to get him to a uh, a place. I tried to get him to let me call an ambulance for him. I tried to you know, all this stuff, and then he stopped calling me, and he didn't call me for four days. And twice we sent a wellness check on him, and the second time they found him dead. It's a nightmare that so many families go through. So many, and it's just taking. It just eats away at good people. It eats away at good, healthy people. Melissa's former partner, Julie Seifer, gave birth to Beckett in 1998, and he was the second oldest of Melissa's four children. He'd always been a little different. He'd always been, um, he wasn't terribly comfortable in uh, your formal classrooms and things. He was, I heard someone describe him once as when Beckett's happy, everyone's happy. But when Beckett's not happy, nobody's happy. <laughs> he was always sweet. He had a hard time understanding the world, I think. He was 100% happy when he was on his snowboard in that world, when he was out on a trail somewhere and on a hike or riding his mountain bike. If he could be lost in nature, it made sense. His foot, his ankle really bothered him and it gave him a whole lot of pain and it kept him from being a professional snowboarder. He he was really on that path and he tried and it and it that sort of he got lost then. Because if he wasn't gonna do that, what was he gonna do? Beckett had injured his ankle in a 2016 snowboarding accident and was eventually prescribed opioids for his pain. I didn't know for so long that how how much he was abusing the opioids and how you know easily I didn't even know the doctors gave it to him at first. When he came back here for a while and he would stay with us, he told me, look, this is what I'm doing every day just to maintain. And he sobered up the beginning of last year. He went to a detox. You know, he knew he, and he spent a few days. He just wouldn't go into a, like a program to help, he, he wasn't looking for help not to do it, he just wanted to get off of it. And so 
you know, he, once again, he was an adult and that was all I could do is, okay, let him do that. And he, uh, you know, I don't know when he started back up. I don't, I don't know that. I, I don't know a lot of the facts of what he was doing, but he would share me. I, di I didn't know he had trouble. I knew he detoxed. I paid for the detox and you're hoping the best for him. And, and, you know, and they, the lying and lying makes it almost impossible to really know what's going on with them. And so it just, it, it got worse and worse the last couple months and then the last couple of weeks and then the last couple of days. Those last four days, I hadn't heard from him. So I was, you know, I, I'd already had the thought of, oh, what if he's dead? So it wasn't a shock. It was a, damn, you know, he, he just slipped away. Melissa had been quarantining at home with her three children and wife, Linda Wallum. The good news is we were all together. We were all in this house when we found out. So we were able to grieve together for, you know, a few days and be together. I do like how our family doesn't hide the fact we don't get maudlin. We don't, you know, wail over it. There's no shame in this. This was uh, his life, his choices, the way he made them. It, it, you know, they, it's clear to them what it is. So um, it, we, we, we let it be. He's still a part of us. He's still a part of our memories of our, of our family, of our, of our talk. He was there at Christmas with us. You know, we were, we, we, we let it be. After the tragic loss of her son, Melissa turned to her music to help her heal. Last June, the rock icon launched Etheridge TV, a live streaming platform where fans can watch her daily concerts and chat shows. The minute I realized, oh, my life's changed, my son's died, this is something I, I need to go in, I looked at my wife and I said, I'm going out in the garage, I'm gonna change that into a studio and we're gonna build a streaming studio and we're gonna, and she looked at me like I was crazy, but she kept coming out of here every day with me. We cleaned it, we, uh, we got cameras, we, I, I, I it has grown. I, I went to my, I've got a warehouse where I got a bunch of posters and everything and we just built this thing. It took us about four weeks to build it all, put it all together. And I sold subscriptions to my fans. And let me tell you, coming out here and singing, on, I, I sing, I do shows on Tuesday, Thursday and, and Saturdays are concerts. And my Tuesdays, I do cover songs. I haven't done cover songs for like 30 years. Tomorrow, I'm doing one hit wonders. You know, it's, I actually really enjoy and I interact with, with my social media, with the fans. Welcome to Linda and me on Etheridge TV. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> we haven't yeah, practiced it at all. Wednesdays, we do like, it's a Linda and me, it's my wife and I do like this chat show. We just uplift and, and it's funny and it's fun. And then Fridays, I've been showing old bootlegs of my old concerts and we talk about it. And I'm doing a, we call it a live umentary. It's basically, I'm going through my life and showing my pictures and old stuff that I have and the, they just love it. And and it's it's it does as much for us as it, it does for them. So Etheridge TV is is probably something we'll do even after, uh, after I go back on the road, we'll take it with us. We'll find a way to stay connected. While her son's story can't be easy to tell, Melissa has never shied away from sharing, especially if her experience might help someone. I wouldn't say it's important for me to share a story. I would say it, my life's path, the, the choices that I've made. I made a choice in the 90s to be open about my sexuality. And when I did that, when I chose to be honest, I still have people coming to me saying, you saved my life when I was in high school. I didn't know anybody else that was gay but you. And the fact that I got to live my life openly and freely who I was, it brought me health. Then when I went through cancer, I also had a choice to not tell anybody about that, do that very privately. But I said, why would I do that now? I just walk the path. When opioid addiction took my son, I, I wasn't going to hide that. There's, you know, people judge people, you know, I'm, I can't, what other people think of me is none of my business. So I just, 
I just walk. I, I know it feels better to be open about it, to be truthful about it. it. It feels better. And if I can help anyone else who has a loved one who's going through this or who has lost a loved one, we are not here to save someone's life. We are here to be an example. And if it that example, if that that we are influences someone to make a change, that's the best we can do, is be just 100% who we are, loving, loving ourselves, choosing, making healthy choices, then we can be an example. That's just what I believe.